One of the most recent books by Cal Newport is Low Productivity. And in this video, we're looking at how we can apply some principles from the book into templates or systems that you might have in Notion, in Coda, or in Airtable. So I've created three templates on each of these tools following some low productivity principles. And by the end of this video, the goal is that you either get some ideas on how you can customize your existing systems to implement these principles and how to build them, or you can directly download the templates that you like that you can find in the description of the video. Fundamentally, there are three principles of low productivity that are do fewer things, work at a natural pace, and obsess over quality. And all of these three principles are essential to this low productivity mindset and approach to knowledge work in particular. Because if you look at past knowledge workers, the original knowledge workers that are the writers and philosophers before the advent of technological knowledge work as we see it right now, with many people employed in that kind of work, those people would go slow and produce work that would last for decades and centuries, at least the most successful ones. And so Carl Newport argues how can we apply those behaviors and the principles from those people into our knowledge workers into the current day's knowledge worker schedule and way of working which is instead quite the opposite of going slow and obsessing over quality it is rather based on output regardless of quality and also based on hyperactive hive mind behavior that is the tendency to constantly chat with each other through instant communication and through emails and this is also a topic of another book that is a world without email and also created some templates some time ago for that book that you can find linked in the description so that's the intro. Let's get into each template, starting from the Notion template. Okay, here is the Notion template, and at the top you can see the three principles of slow productivity, do fewer things, work at a natural pace, and obsess over quality. And um, within these principles and within the book, Kanyobot also provides some suggestions in terms of tactics or strategies that are very practical to implement in order to actually live this kind of lifestyle as a knowledge worker that has independence in terms of how you structure your day and you organize your work overall. So there are missions, there are projects and there are tasks. These are the three main components of slow productivity. And in particular, missions are ongoing goals or services that direct your professional life. And here you want to have one, in the best case scenario, at most two or three active at any given time to reduce the amount of commitments that you have ongoing at any given time so that you can actually produce quality on them and focus your time on those missions. Then there are projects. So each mission can be broken down into projects. So these are work-related initiatives that can't be completed in a single session. That means they have a duration or they might be ongoing as well. And in order to complete these projects, you have a set of tasks. So action items that you will do that will move the project forward and hence the mission, the overarching goal or area that you're working on forward. And so tasks are the last component on the system and are the action items that you complete to make progress on projects and hence missions. On this dashboard, you can see the projects by status where you have a pie chart broken down by status and you can see total projects at the center of the pie chart and then these statuses and the percentage of projects on each status. So this gives you an idea of how many projects you have going on at any given time because the key principles of slow productivity is to reduce the number of projects that you have active at any given time. And then you can see task by status. So same concept, how many tasks do you have and how are they broken down by status. Now let's get into missions. And when I open missions, that is a database and this database contains two views, list and table, and each page is a mission, so an ongoing area or goal or service. So if I open internal processes, for example, that's a page within the database. You can see this database has four properties plus two relation properties down here that are minimized. So I can add a description of what this mission is about. I can archive it if at some point it is completed, if it is a goal, especially that's useful. And I can see it last at the time. And then each mission can have projects as well as tasks that are directly related to that mission. So as a consequence, when I open the page, I can see down here all the related projects for that mission and all the related tasks. So these are linked database views that I created in the template using the slash create linked view of database. And then here I select the source database for example, projects or tasks, and then set up the view and the filter that is here that you can see. It is dynamic from the template. Mission contains internal processes in this case. But if I were to go to the template here and edit it, you will see that the filter references the actual template, which means then when I apply the template to a page, the filter updates itself to match that page name. So on the mission page at a glance, I can see all the products, all the tasks for that mission as well. And the projects can be in a board view by status where I can drag them around as well as in a timeline where I can change the time frame where I look at all the projects that I have going on for any specific mission. And if I open the projects database, I can then see a centralized view of all the projects across all missions. And that's where I can also easily filter by mission. Here, I can filter by status, by time frame, and I can visualize projects in different formats, just like on the mission page. The board, 
timeline and table views are the main ones that are in here in this system because they are simple they convey the information in different ways which depending on what you like you might find any given view uh, more useful than another one but the information is the same so then when i open a project i can see here there is a mission a status a time frame the task progress that is a roll-up that takes the percentage of tasks completed over the total tasks related to that project then i can apply the template which is actually the default but in this case it wasn't applied because i created this page before creating the template and then the template has a section for the description quick links and resources and then all the related tasks down here and that's a template here and finally in tasks i can see all the action items that i do also here board timeline and table and then i can open the task i can see the due date that is the date when i intend to actually do that task the due date or the deadline the status of the task product mission and i can also break it down into patterns and subtasks so that there is this toggle action going on here where i can create subtasks down here here is the coda doc for slow productivity you can see if i open the left sidebar that is a dashboard missions projects tasks and the usage guide where you would find this video so the dashboard is an overview of all the key data from missions projects and tasks whereas if you open each of these then you will see the specific data about all the missions, the specific data about the projects and tasks. And these databases are related. Just like in the Notion template, missions are related to projects and tasks, and projects are related to missions and tasks. And as a consequence, tasks are both are also related to projects and missions. So everything is related together via relation columns. So on the dashboard, I can see here buttons to quickly add a new task. This will open a centered model for me so that I can create a new task test task for example and then if i don't want to refine it right now i can leave it as it is it will end up in my task inbox and i will refine it later this is one of the principles of getting things done by david allen which is a very popular framework in knowledge work in particular but you can see that every task can have a status it can be linked to a project mission it can have a due date a due date and other data but if none of these are filled out then that task will be part of the inbox right here so then when I want to pass to the inbox, I can then open it and organize it properly so that it ends up in the appropriate view down below. And I can see it within the active tasks here. I can also quickly add a project with the same principle. There is no project inbox. So when I add a project, it will then end up in the projects table and I can refine it instantly or later. Here are the three principles of slow productivity, always as a reminder at the top of the dashboard. And there are some charts similar to the Notion template, products by status and tasks by status right here. These are pie charts. And down here then there are active tasks. And uh, here you can quickly see how many active tasks you have. So that's a dynamic formula that I created using equals so that it opens up the formula model and I can write a formula. So if I right click on it, I will see what the formula is about. Active tasks, that is this view here that is filtered to show only the active tasks dot count that is take all the active tasks in that table and then count how many of them are there so that i can quickly get an idea of how many active open tasks i have right now when i scroll down i can see a view of tasks and this is filtered to show all the open tasks so when the status is not done you can also further filter here via this filter bar and you can see tasks can also be broken down into sub items that is a new feature in coda if i open task i then have all that same information here when I go to missions, in here I can quickly add the new mission via the new button. Otherwise, I can open and edit this new one. And inside of it, I will see the archive checkbox. I can write notes here on this canvas column that is free flow. So I can also type slash and then add any type of formatting or tables that I want. Then I can see a view of all the projects related to that mission and all the tasks related to that mission. Very similar as a concept and as a design choice as in the Notion template that I showed you earlier. And the same goes for projects. Whenever I open a project in here, whether it be table, timeline, or board, I will see inside of it an overview of all the data in here. And all the sub-projects, if you like, you can break down projects into sub-projects and then all the tasks for that project. And when I have these views here, I can also, if I like, expand in full screen, which I tend to like more. And then if I want to create a task directly from here, I can add new and then add that task, add the due date, and all the information that I need directly from here. And this ends up in the task table. In here, I'm gonna just pick a different layout, select the task layout, then go back to the product page. And now this is the correct layout that I want that is organized better in columns. 
Okay, let's go back to projects. You can see that projects have different views. For example, a timeline view might be useful when you want to see how long a project takes and uh, how much focus you want to invest in it. So in here, you can scroll horizontally and uh, you will see projects are grouped by statuses so that it doesn't become too overwhelming. If you don't want to see the completed ones, you can just close it, for example, and then you can see all the in progress. Then you can open it by clicking on that project just like that. And finally, tasks is where you can see all your tasks. Here as well, there is a table, there is a timeline and a board, as well as a button to quickly create a new task. The add table base, as per usual, is composed of the three main tabs at the top that are data, where you can find all the tables in the system, in this case, missions, projects, and tasks. These are relational tables. Then you can see automations, where you can find all the automations in the add table base. That's what it's called here. Slow productivity is called the base. Then the base is composed of tables. Tables are composed of views on the left hand side here that you can expand and collapse. And then the final tab on at the top is interfaces. And interfaces are a way to visualize data from tables in a more user-friendly way because tables are very strict. Of course, you can have different views of tables, so that definitely helps. But for some people, interfaces might be better, just a, a better experience, more pleasant, because here you can also create charts. You can create views that are very simple and straightforward. You can have buttons to add missions, to add projects and tasks. And you can see here there are three interfaces. And as an admin, you can also click on edit to edit the interfaces here. And you can see them here. These are the pages. So each interface, for example, missions is an interface and each interface is composed of pages. For example, overview is a page within missions. But if I open the projects interface, the projects interface contains three pages, overview, projects gallery, and projects Kanban. So each page is independent from each other, but it is part of the same interface and it can reference elements, for example, detailed views from that interface only. So if I am to click on done here, I'm going to act like I'm an actual user. So as a user, I can actually just operate here in the interfaces instead of having to go into the tables if I want. For example, if I open missions, here I can see a view of all the missions that are not archived. And in here, I can directly change data if I like, or I can open the page. So this will expand the record. In this case, innovate remote workspaces. That's a mission. So a record in technical terms in the add table table. And in here I can see all the columns, all the fields for that record. So the description that I can change, the archive checkbox. I can see a view of all the projects and a view of all the tasks. So same exact concepts as in Coda, as in Notion. This becomes a dashboard view or the detailed page of that mission where I can step back and look at the big picture, all the products and all the tasks going on for that mission or that have been completed for that mission. On the right hand side panel, there are also comments and that's why you can leave comments for yourself or if you collaborate with others, that's also a useful way to do that. You can see here there are buttons for projects and for tasks. So if I want to quickly create a project within a mission page, I can do that via the button. I can also do that down here by clicking this button, add a project. But if I click that button, this will allow me to either select an existing project from the list or I can hit the new button. I can hit the plus button and this will open up a form that I can fill out. It will be automatically related to that mission. I can give it a status. A start date, end date, photos, just to make it look better in the project interface that we're going to see later. And if I create, this product was created successfully and it will now show up on the interface page for the specific mission in this case. I can also open any of these on site pick and see all the details inside of them. Also change things up here. And the same concept applies to tasks. Now you can see if we go to edit the data, overview is a list view essentially. So if I click on this, I can see this setup. So overview, the source is the missions table. Here are the visualizations list. But if I want, I can also create other ones here. Then there is a filter that says archive is unchecked. There are some drop downs that are here. I can also add other ones. Drop downs are filters. And then here I can allow some user actions. Sorting, searching. These are these options here at the top right of that view. And if I want to add the record to a form, that will activate this button, add mission, which I can also customize here. Then you can see that this button has a form linked to it. So if I want to edit what the form looks like, I can click on edit form and this will open up the form and I can edit all the fields here. I can add the fields if I want to show something else from that table. And then if I click on the list view itself, I can customize what that view looks like. So I can show and hide fields in here. I can add a prefix, group, filter conditions, the row height, the color, and you can see here all the options that I have. If I activate the click into record deca details option, I can customize what that record detail page looks like. That is what I showed you earlier. So the dashboard for the mission in this case, you can see here it's called mission detail. And then if I click on it, this will open the detail editing panel where I can customize the look of the fields that show up 
on this view, as well as how they show up. For example, if it is a linked record field that is a relation to another table, then I can click on it and I can customize if I want it to show as a field or as a view. If it is as a view, what I want it to look like. And I can also click on it to see all the fields and the other customization options, just like before. Let's click on done. Let's continue. So now you understand the concepts of editing the interfaces and uh, all these other interfaces are built in the same way. So there are projects and there are tasks. And if I look at projects, there's an overview of all the projects in a list view, but I can edit them or I can open them as a record detail view. And I can see all the tasks down here. Then I can see them in a gallery like so. Also opening the record detail by clicking on it and the Kanban view that is by status, but I can drag things around. So you can see this becomes a view of all the data from the data tab. And that is what an Airtable interface does. Now let's go back to the data tab and see the structure of those tables. Because you can see there are missions, there are projects, and there are tasks. And in projects, one, there are some useful views here. For example, I can see a Gantt chart. This can be quite powerful, in particular if you have complex projects. Because then you can see here a timeline view, and uh, you can also click on it to see the project name, the start date, the end date that you can adjust, as well as the duration in days that you can adjust also. You can move things around in the timeline like so, and it will adjust itself because it is sorted by date. Whenever a project only has an end date, it will show up as a milestone that you can see here. When I click on it, I can see there is an end date but no start date. The timeline view as well is similar to the Gantt. So here you will see for each day at the top what projects are there and the projects are organized in a timeline view also with milestones for those that only have an end date and they are grouped by status. When I click on the record, I can also expand it to see the record view. And that concludes the overview of these low productivity templates in Notion, in Coda, and in Airtable. You can find the links to these templates in the description. If you have questions, let me know. For now, thank you for watching, and see you in the next one.